I'm high, high up in the French Alps. The town of Chamonix is about a mile beneath me right down there. This place is home to some of the most extreme mountain sports in the world. I mean, it looks beautiful right now, but the weather can change so quickly. And if you get caught out, this place becomes terrifying and unforgiving. The mountain rescue team are called out on around 1,500 rescues every year. And if it weren't for the team, many climbers just wouldn't make it. It's early morning and another fine day in the French Alps. But already the PGHM, one of the world's leading mountain rescue teams, are out on an emergency. Two climbers have collapsed near the summit of Mont Blanc at over 15,000 feet. They have altitude sickness. The only cure to get them down in a hurry. As the rescue helicopter climbs up the mountain towards the stricken climbers, hundreds of mountaineers who've come from all over the world are already making their way to the summit of Western Europe's highest mountain. One in five will get headaches, but it can get far worse. At this altitude, the brain can become starved of oxygen. Headaches can quickly turn to dizziness, disorientation, collapse and death. At this height, it's not just the cold that kills. The rescue team find the struggling climbers and load them into the helicopter for a rapid descent into the oxygen-rich air of the Chamonix Valley, where the climbers quickly recover. It's another successful rescue for the team under the command of Captain Blaise Agresti. We have people who fall down a crevasse sometimes. Sometimes people who are in the forest hiking and we fall down with leg uh, broken or like that, we fall in, in rock climbing. But sometimes also we have on the Mont Blanc some people who, who lost because they, they are caught by uh, bad weather condition and uh, we have to, to search them during a long time and it's a, it's a difficult rescue. It's early morning and we're over two miles high. Today the weather's great, but for the past four days, Mont Blanc has been battered by ferocious storms. This morning, as the weather cleared, a climber was spotted wandering alone, disorientated, and shouting for help near the summit of Mont Blanc. The helicopter's just bringing him back. After four days near the summit, it's remarkable he's still alive. But disturbingly, he says he was climbing with a friend who's still lost somewhere on the mountain. He says they left their backpacks to make a sprint for the summit. The rescue team has recovered their packs, unopened and abandoned. For the rescuers, it's a puzzle. One is good health, very tired, but good health. And he, he climbed the Mont Blanc to ask for the rescue. His friends, they don't have anything to eat and to drink for four days. While Dr. Morricchioli of the Chamonix Hospital treats the climber, the rescue team have two big questions on their minds. Is the friend still alive? And if he is, can they find him in time? He lost his friends. We don't know exactly what happens. If he's in a, he said he's in a cave, probably they make a hole like to, to spend a night in a mountain, but I don't know what happens exactly. As they open the climbers' packs, the mystery deepens. We need to go up again, perhaps with the dog. But I don't understand because he said that it, there is four days they are on the Mont Blanc without eat, without food, and without uh, and without drink. I don't uh, I don't understand. 
There's no time to lose. If the lost friend is alive, they have to find him quickly. But they don't know exactly where he is on the mountain, and he's probably buried in the snow. Some people stay more than four days in the mountain and still alive, but the problem is that, that if you move like for four days and just lose conscience in the few, last few hours, it could be okay, but if you didn't move for four days, it's not really good. For emergencies like this, the team has trained an Alsatian to sniff out bodies buried by avalanches and blizzards. We have a dog called Jimmy. He can smell people under the snow, sometimes one meter, two meters, three meters. And after the rescue, I have to dig and to, to carry out the, the victim. Within 15 minutes, they're on the mountain. The task is enormous. They're almost three miles high and it's bitterly cold. All the rescue team know is the climber's friend is lost, probably buried in the snow around here, near the summit on the north face of Mont Blanc. Unless he's found soon, his chances of survival are zero. The team quickly finds a snow cave, which looks like a place where the lost climber could have taken shelter and maybe survived the bad weather. Hey, my Jimmy, hey, hey, my Jimmy, hey, hey, Jimmy, la, hey. He has to be pulled down, but Jimmy's acute sense of smell is the only hope for the man. The climber's not down there. For five days, the rescue team searched methodically for the missing climber. It's freezing, and they're on the very roof of Europe. But too much time has passed, and it's no longer a rescue. Now they're looking for a frozen corpse. Throughout the rescue, the weather has stayed clear. As the team searches, other climbers fight their way up the classic route to the summit of Mont Blanc. It's the foremost place in the world where enthusiastic amateurs, weekend climbers taking a few days off from desk jobs in Brussels, Paris and London, can rub shoulders with mountaineers who've climbed Mount Everest. But there's no glory up here for the rescue team. They've decided to make one last attempt to find the climber's body before the weather changes. So they bring the rescued climber back up and the hope he'll recognize where he left his friend. Here. They use avalanche probes to find the buried body, but so far, nothing. It's very difficult to put the probe in the snow because with the wind, the snow is not the same that the first day of the accident. Then 
We are looking all around here. He said that his friend was probably 20 meters between here and here and 50 meters or 30 meters between the rocks behind the you and here. And I think that today we stopped the, we stopped the research because tomorrow the, the, the bad weather will be come here. The snow is uh, falling down again and perhaps here in one or two days there is there will be one or one meter and a half snow. Before finishing their search and retreating from the mountain, the winds reach near gale force and the temperature plummets well below zero. The rescue team have done everything they can. The body of the missing climber is still up there now, buried and frozen somewhere near the summit of Mont Blanc. Coming up after the break, more daring helicopter rescues and the story of climbers trapped in another terrible storm. The Chamonix Valley and the surrounding Alpine peaks are a holiday haven for everyone. You don't have to be a serious climber to enjoy this beautiful French mountain playground. The Chamonix Mountain Rescue Team gets called out to all sorts of emergencies. Not least on the Mer de Glace the biggest glacier in the French Alps, a moving river of ice grinding its way down to the valley. When the mountain rescue team picks up hikers here, they're often exhausted, frightened, and can't walk. This French woman has broken her ankle. The rescuer pumps the air out of the vacuum splint that will keep her leg rigid and safe until she reaches the hospital. Without the rescue team, she'd be stranded overnight on the freezing glacier. Once on board this helicopter, she'll be down in the Chamonix hospital trauma room in just a few minutes. Down at the rescue team's base, another climber who's had an accident on the glacier is already receiving treatment. He's just had the fright of his life. He fell into a crevasse, a deep chasm in the ice on the glacier, wearing only a pair of shorts and a T-shirt. Oh, that's right. Okay. It's, everything's OK. He survived by the skin of his teeth falling down a crevasse can be fatal. On the surface, it's warm in the sun, but down inside the crevasse, it's sub-zero. Your body heat first melts the ice, and then it refreezes around you. If they don't get climbers out, they'll be entombed in the ice forever. We were just following uh, the path, actually, and all of a sudden, well, it, I, I still cannot believe everything. I could. What happened? But I mean, all of a sudden, I I I fell down and uh, I I went in, into the glacier with my head down. And the, well, the only thing I don't know how, but what what I did or what happened, but uh, somehow I, I at least I I got my head my uh, my head out of the out of the snow and the ice. And uh, well, after a couple of minutes of, of panic. <laughs> uh, well, somehow I got out of the, 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 the glacier. I think I'm very lucky to be alive. I still don't believe it. I mean, my English is pretty well, pretty good, but <laughs> at this moment it, I, it's hard to uh, to explain what happened, all right? I still don't believe it. I'm just very, 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 very glad that I'm still alive. 
It's raining in Chamonix. For people in town, it takes the edge off their holidays. But for climbers caught high up in the mountains, there's a blizzard. Today, several climbers are stranded high on Mont Blanc. But the helicopter can't fly in this weather. All the rescue team can do is wait at the helicopter base. We are waiting for the weather to take the helicopter. Just weather supposed to be good in the middle of the afternoon, so that's why we are waiting for the we're waiting for the good weather. The storm continues and a disaster is brewing. The climbers are stranded near a refuge, an emergency shelter high on the mountain. But there's no food and water. The climbers are getting desperate. They radio down to the mountain rescue base. No, it's impossible because the weather is bad. For us, in uh, two or three hours, uh, for us, uh, window, uh, meteor. Uh, what about tomorrow morning? How is the weather for tomorrow, please? Uh, normally, tomorrow morning is good. Dr. Morricioli is concerned that the stranded climbers can't hold out much longer. There's still no fish value and they have nothing to drink, nothing to eat, and they're just asking for the forecast tomorrow morning to see what happens if they either have to stay or to, to try to go down. But they say they are too tired to go down, so they expect for the mountain rescue. It's really crap weather. It's very cold and it's windy and it's no fresh snow. All the good things. But the rain in the valley doesn't stop. Up in the mountains, the weather must be atrocious. And the rescue team knows that they must get to the climbers before nightfall. The helicopter is made ready. In it, the team will fly as high as they can underneath the storm clouds. Then the rescuers and doctors will have to get out and climb up to the stranded climbers on foot. It's not going to be easy. Uh, it's five o'clock now, so we, we try to go to a uh, helicopter as fast as we can. So after the helicopters, we have to walk something like five or six hours to reach a fish value. Maybe more, it's depending on the forecast, even of the weather. With the wind, with the fresh snow, it could be much longer. Clouds have closed in, and the helicopter has to drop the team lower than they'd hoped. They have no choice but to climb for hours up another 5,000 feet to the refuge. It's cold, it's steep, and it's difficult. Only the best climbers would dare attempt such a climb in this weather. Even in good conditions, this is considered a serious climb. For the rescuers, there's no choice but to push on. If the stranded climbers above them have to spend another night on the mountain, some of them face dehydration, hypothermia, exhaustion, and possibly even death. Say it's a nice day for the rescue. <laughs> On the the Halfway up the ridge, after climbing for hours, there's an unexpected break in the weather. 
The rescue team learned that it's now possible for a helicopter to fly to the refuge and to reach the stricken climbers directly. Down below, another of their colleagues is picked up from their base. The rescue team on the mountain watch as the helicopter starts to ferry down the stranded climbers. Now the helicopter is uh, taking one person at a time to uh, the booty hut. To, uh, and then from uh, the booty hut, maybe to Ovalo, to try to, uh, to take uh, the person west to rescue. But the rescue team can't turn back. They'll have to climb on. They'll reach the shelter in darkness and give whatever help they can to the remaining climbers. Up at the top, winds reach 70 kilometers an hour. The helicopter can't land because of the strong winds. Two more climbers are taken down. But there are more inside the refuge hut who need to be airlifted to safety, and nightfall is approaching fast. Among those rescued, a man suffering from frostbite and exhaustion. Pilots fly the helicopters late into the darkness. In all, eight people are rescued and airlifted off the mountain. The rescue has involved two helicopters, seven men, and taken most of the day. up here at the moment but as you've just seen it can be treacherous and it changes very quickly every year the French mountain rescue team are called out to 1500 rescues join us again next week for more action here high up in the French Alps